everyone, I'm Shanna, and welcome to Fellowship of the Parks Online. We are so glad you're joining us today. We hope that you're able to get the FOTP experience from wherever you are. Our service will be starting in just a few moments. Please take a moment to fill out a digital connection card and let us know you were here. Ask a question or leave a prayer request. The Notes tab to the right has today's listening guide. The Chat tab is where you can engage with other viewers or hosts during today's message. If you have children at home, there is a kids link at the top of the screen where you can find age appropriate children's videos. You can find all this and more in the FOTP Church app as well. Thank you for joining us today at FOTP Online. Sing this out, church. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Yes, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. My God will finish what He started. Yes, my God will finish what He started. This is my testimony. Testimony. This is my testimony. 
everybody, again, welcome to Fellowship of the Parks. We are so glad that you're with us. Say hello to those around you. Hey, if you're joining us online, thanks so much for being here, being a part of our family. Be sure to engage in the chat. Let other folks know that you are there and what God's doing in your life as well. We're going to continue to worship in just a few minutes. So we have a brand new song uh, for you today. And, uh, you know, there's just something really powerful that happens when God's people sing, when God's people praise and just lift their voices and lift their hands to the Lord. We find strength and we find comfort and we find peace in Him. And that's exactly what this next song is about, about letting our praise rise up to the Lord. Let's sing this new one together. Not 
welcome. My name is Troy Wolf, and I am the online campus pastor for Fellowship of the Parks. I am so glad you're joining us today. I like to say, whether you're at home, at work, or out playing, wherever you're at, we want to meet you right there. And so we're excited you are here. And uh, I want to encourage you uh, to make sure to fill out our digital connection card. You can fill that out through our app or our website, but whenever you fill that out, make sure to share a prayer request. One of the great things I love to do is be able to pray over the prayer request on our connection cards. Also on that connection card, you can sign up for different things. And one real neat thing is if this is your first time to fill out a digital connection card, make sure to check the box that this is your first time. And I wanna send you a digital Starbucks gift card just for saying thanks for being here and that you matter to us. One of the things that you can sign up for on the digital connection card is our starting point. If this is a hosted service, you can just click on the link that's provided. But starting point is a, a real cool experience where we get together and look where the church has been and where we're going and how you can be a part of that community. Make sure to sign up for that. Uh, and as everyone knows, we're in the sprint to Easter. Easter's coming up. We're gonna have services on April the 3rd and April the 4th. And you know, one of the most amazing things that happens around this time of year is people who don't have a relationship with Jesus start to get interested. Uh, we'll see an influx of new people visiting our physical campuses, but we also see new people coming in online and we wanna serve them well. And so we have a great opportunity for you to help make an impact in their lives by hosting, by engaging, and chatting. If you click on the link to sign up to host with us or you can put it on your connection card, we'll show you how to do everything. But what's so cool is as we engage with people, we let them know that they matter to us, but they also matter to Jesus. And you can be a part in making that impact in their life. And so I wanna encourage you to do that. You know, one of the things about Fellowship of the Parks is we are such a generous church. We've seen more ministry happen over this last year, even with COVID and everything else going on because of the generosity of our church. Church. You're about to hear a story of Camille and Kyle, and they embody this. And, and see, one of the things that people don't realize about generosity is whenever we give of our time, our talent, and even our treasure of our finances, God blesses that to do ministry in other people's lives, but God also makes a huge impact in your own life. And so I wanna encourage you, when you give to Fellowship of the Parks, you can give through our website or through our app, but when you give, you're making an impact in someone's tomorrow and their eternity, just like Camille and Kyle. Enjoy. Tithing, I didn't really have a good feeling for it. You know, I just, I hadn't really grown up in a home that tithed and went to church regularly, and, and she did, so it was a big difference for the both of us especially when we you know, started to kind of take that walk together in faith. So we decided to take the 365 day tithe challenge. In January through March, we became a lot more intentional on what we were doing, the money that was coming in, the money that was going out. In late spring, uh, God had kind of thrown us a little curve ball. Yeah, it was kind of a crazy thing. I had you know, been in the same industry for 15 years and felt like I wasn't helping people long hours, time away from the family. You know, felt like I couldn't truly dedicate myself to her, our children, our church. And I quit my job and I just put all my faith in him. And I said, if that's what the Lord is telling you to do, do it. We went two consecutive months without any income. It hurt us because we couldn't tithe to the church. It just makes you feel a certain way. You know, missing two months, like we truly felt like bad. That I think it really clicked for the both of us that we needed to be able to tithe to the church. I think I truly opened up at that point and seeing what happened, you know, when we started to truly, you know, come together and work as a team and tithe and continuously go to church, it makes a big difference in, in our lives. God's word is not something you can pick and take from for what suits your life. And when he says tithe the first 10%, he means tithe the first 10%. He can do more with that 10% than you can do with the 100%. And it can be scary. God doesn't call us to, you know, pay all of our bills and do all of our shopping, plan our vacations, and then what's left, give to the church. When you're intentional with your 10% and you're faithful and loyal to what God has asked of you, He then turns around and uses you in greater ways. Doesn't mean that you, you know, tithe and all of a sudden just he's gonna take your 10% and you know, you're just gonna become wealthy. That's how a lot of people think and that's not how that works. It's gonna make you richer in your home, in your marriage, your family, and it's gonna make you have the ability to step outside of your comfort zone.
have you longed to be long? The truth is, everybody wants to be loved and wants to be long. That's what Better Together is all about. Helping us to become a community of people who genuinely love each other and care for each other. We are going to deepen our sense of connection within our church and reach out to those outside our church. Honoring God means giving ourselves to Him. Hey everybody, welcome to Fellowship of the Parks. My name is Dusty Yalp. I'm the campus pastor here at our North Fort Worth campus. Hello to everybody joining us across the Metroplex and those of you who are part of our family online. So glad that you guys could join us too. We are continuing our Better Together series. We've got a few weeks left before Easter and so really excited about where we're going today. So this is spring break weekend, leading into spring break week. So Anybody got any plans? Like put it in the chat. If you're going somewhere, put it in the chat. Tell us where you're going. Uh, so we actually, as soon as I'm through preaching on Sunday, we are leaving and going to Colorado. We're going skiing. And we try to do that every year as a family. And I'm just telling you, like to get all of our family together when we go skiing, it's, it's no small amount of chaos. Like it, it's great, but, there's, but it's a little chaotic because there are four families represented. So it's the three girls and their families and then my father-in-law and mother-in-law and then if we invite friends or anybody like there's anywhere between 10 to 16 to 18 people in one condo. But I love it because the cool thing about when we go skiing together is everybody takes care of one another. It's like, oh, hey, I need an extra pack of hot hands. It's like, oh, okay, it's, it's right over there. Or, or my, my gloves have a hole in them. It's like, here, use these. And, and, or, you know, you're on the mountain and you're like, man, I'm hungry and I can't wait to get to the bottom of the mountain and buy a $75 hamburger. And it's like, okay, here's, here's a bar. You know, we're good to go. And each family, like, takes a specific night and makes a meal and, and covers food for everybody else. It's taking care of one, one another. And that's really what the church is supposed to be like. We're supposed to take care, be generous and take care of one another. And so we're going to take a look uh, at, in Acts chapter 2. That's where we're going to be at starting off today. So if you have your Bible, you can go ahead and turn there or you can join us uh, on your app or follow along on, and take notes in the listening guide and everything if you're joining us online and everything as well. But look, before we dive into God's Word, let me pray for us right quick. Okay, here we go. God, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you so much for your generous heart, God, of giving us Jesus, of giving us a family and welcoming us in. We love you so much. God, be with us now. Help us to receive everything you have for us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to be in Acts chapter 2. We're going to read verses 44 through 47, and we're going to kind of talk about it a little bit as we go along. So here we go. All the believers... This is the, the early church were together and had everything in common. This is not to say that there weren't differences, but those differences were united under the banner of Jesus. They were together. They sold property and possessions and gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. They were together. This is this idea that we've been talking about, that we need one another. We need to be together. We need to be worshiping God and finding that encouragement together. So whether you're in person or you're online, pick a service and attend that one regularly. and Get to know those people and be encouraged by one another. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So you see, the early church was characterized by generosity. They focused on generosity, taking care of one another, and that set them apart from other organizations, from other institutions of their time. Because everybody else was all about power and money and wealth for themselves, and the church was all about taking care of its people and their community. And that was attractive. And people looked at that and said, I want to be a part of that. And so the big idea of what we're talking about today is that generosity is more than just giving. It's more than just giving. Giving is absolutely a part of generosity. But what I really hope that we can get is that generosity is a way of living. It's a way of living life. And that's what God wants for us. So why should we be generous? Well, first of all, 
It's a command. <laughs> like God told us, be generous, give of the tithe, give to the mission of the church, take care of one another. So it, it's a command. Also, there's just being nice generally. Like, because if I have something that you need and I have enough of this thing and I don't share it with you, I'm just being a jerk. And like, nobody wants to be a jerk. We want to be kind to one another. But then, so outside of the command and just being generally nice, there's also benefits of spiritual growth in that. Like as we grow and take next steps as a disciple, as a follower of Christ, generosity is just as much a much piece of that as is reading your Bible and studying and worshiping and being together. Generosity is part of who we are. So generosity, some spiritual benefits of this. It helps us create community. It helps us create community. That whole idea, again, of being better together. So let's go back to Acts again. Let's look at chapter 4, and let's see what Paul tells us about creating community together. All the believers were in one heart and one mind. That's that unity in Christ that we've talked about. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. What a beautiful thing. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them and brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. So look, listen to me. This is not socialism, okay? This is Christianity, God's church caring for people. And look, we've experienced this firsthand. Y'all remember a couple of weeks ago when it was literally 80 degrees colder than what it is right now during Snowvid, Snowmageddon, Snowpocalypse, whatever you wanted to call it? Look, y'all were inviting people over to your house because some folks didn't have electricity, some folks had to boil water, some folks didn't have any water, some folks didn't have any warmth or heat for gas. I heard conversations at the kids' school and, and here at church of, hey, I have firewood, I have water, what do you need? I have a case of water, let me help you out. We have a meal, we're going to bring food over. It was taking care of one another. It's bringing what you had to the table to help others in need. Have you ever been to a potluck, particularly like a Baptist church potluck? Because it, it's a whole nother level of experience. Because everybody, like every family brings their specific thing, like one dish. Like, and Peaches always brought dumplings because nobody made them like she did. And my mom always brought green bean casserole. And Miss Myers brought blackberry cobbler. And, and they put all this stuff together. And it was this entire table of cardiac arrest. And, and it was just this incredible thing. And 17 cakes and all the nutritional value taken away from butter and Crisco. But it was so good. And when all of it came together, it was more than enough for everybody. But this isn't just about food. Like, I love food, but it's not just about food. And we do this in small groups. It's one of the reasons that we encourage you guys to be plugged into a small group. Because over the years, we have given one another diapers and wipes and changes of clothes for kids. Because kids are gross. And, and have also like, helped out with labor. Fixing fences and water heaters and this past week, several guys got together and, and helped one of our church families move furniture out of their house into a pod because their pipe had busted and they needed uh, to be repaired. It's taking care of one another. But our tendency may say, well, what can I give? I don't have enough. Or when I get better at my gift or my talent that God's given me, then, then, then I'll give. Then I'll be generous. But here's the truth. No, you won't. Because we have to be faithful in what we have right now. Because if we're not faithful with what we have now, what possibly makes us think that we're going to be faithful over here? Because we're still going to have the same mindset where we are. So what we have to do is we have to trust God, have faith in him, and take that first step to give. And once we take that first step, guess what? It feels awesome. And then we want to take another step and give more. And then along the way, we come to realize this beautiful thing that everything we have, every blessing, every check, every resource, every talent is all God's anyway. The blessing is God's to give, but it's mine to manage. 
What are we doing with the blessings, with the resources, with the finances that God has blessed us with? This whole idea of generosity, it was modeled by God through Jesus. Because God gave the absolute best, the most of what he had, his son, so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we could find hope in life and we could be brought into a family, which is what? Community. God gave to create community. Generosity creates community and it also allows us to focus ourselves on the right things. It allows us to focus ourselves on the right thing, the most important thing. My little girl, Taryn, is the worst at this. She is a difficulty to get going in the morning. And so like, I get her up and we were sitting down at the breakfast table the other day and she wants to do anything but what she needs to be doing. And she looks at me and says, Dad, can I tell you something? And I'm like, no, you absolutely cannot. You can eat your waffle and you can go upstairs and brush your teeth. And then she'll go upstairs to go brush her teeth and she'll just stand there in the mirror and not brush her teeth. Or she would go in her room and try to remember how clothes work to put, to put clothes on. And I'm like, baby, do the most important thing. Do what I told you to. And I wonder how many times does God look at us and go, do the most important thing. Do what I told you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, this is really a picture of Jesus going, do the most important thing. Let's look at what Jesus tells us. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So here's the question I'll ask. And this is rhetorical. Don't raise your hand. Don't put up praise hands in the chat. Nothing like that. Like, but here's my question. Is Jesus first in our lives? I mean, really? Really? Is Jesus really first in our lives? Because if we will take a step back and take an honest assessment, we may look at the different pieces and categories of our life and go, well, he's first in my marriage and he's first in my, in, in my, in my health and he's first in my parenting. But then we take a look in our finance category and we go, uh, I don't know about that because it's really difficult to release control of our finances. But here's the thing that I need us to understand. If Jesus isn't first in our finances, he's not first. We can't pick and choose categories of where we want Jesus to be first because Jesus doesn't look at it categorically. Jesus wants all of you. So what's most important? Have you ever tried to have a conversation with a nine-year-old boy playing a video game? or a 39-year-old boy playing a video game. I'll own that, okay? So a couple of years ago, um, Justice was playing a Switch, and I needed him to do something. I can't even remember what it was. And I'm like, hey, bud, I need you to come do this. And y'all, he did not even acknowledge my existence, didn't hear me. And I'm like, son, like I got dad voice on, son, go do this thing. Still nothing. Justice, go do this thing, or I'm gonna take your Switch away. Still nothing. So I go over, take it out of his hands, put it on the dot. I'm like, you're done for a week. And y'all, look, you would have thought I had just committed the most heinous and violent act against my son because he broke into tears, weeping, crying, looked at me and said, Dad, I love my switch. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? I thought I was watching a scene from Lord of the Rings and Gollum going, my precious. Like, that's what it looked like. He was so consumed by this thing. And I was able to have a proud parent moment because I taught him something there that he's continued to repeat and even tried to teach it to his sister, which doesn't work out real well. But I told him, I said, bud, we love people, not things. We love people not things, because when we love things, when we love activities in particular, in those things, it can keep us from letting God be forefront, keeping God from being first in our life. So let me ask you, what's your favorite thing? What's your favorite thing that you love to do so much that when you're doing it, nothing else matters in the entire world? We can easily let that get before God. It can even be a good thing, but it can't be ultimate. 
You see that verse in Matthew, it's not just about money, it's about priorities. It's about putting God first in our life. Because when we get our priorities right, we begin to be thankful and see that, again, all blessings are from God and that creates gratitude. And gratitude turns what we have into enough. And when we realize that what we have is enough, then we want to share it with others. Because gratitude brings generosity and generosity brings gratitude. It's this beautiful cycle. Then we're allowed to bless others. I have a buddy of mine that I've gotten to know real well. His name's Dan, uh, but we call him Nui Nui. And Dan is a, uh, is a tattoo artist and I've really gotten to know him and I love the dude so much, not just because he puts really cool pictures uh, on my arm, but uh, because he has an incredible heart for the gospel and for people. And the other day, Whitney and I were in his shop and, um, and he tells me, he's like, hey, I'll, I'll be with you in just a minute. I'm finishing up this tattoo on this, on this young guy and, and, he's, and he tells us his story. So he says, back in June of last year, early June, there was so much racial tension and hate revolving the racial issues in, in our country. And he said, I put on Instagram, I said, hey, look, if you're reading this and you have a tattoo on you that symbolizes hatred and racial discrimination and you want to be different, you're living a different life now, I want to cover it up for you for free. And he's like, this guy, this kid in here, he reached out to me and I'm doing that for him. And so when, when Dan was done with this young man, this young man came up because he heard me and Whitney, uh, like Dan telling us a story, he comes up to us and he's so joyful because like Dan had covered up this, this tattoo over here and now had the state of Texas like right here. And then over here, it was like this beautiful like dragon and heart looking thing over here. And Dan had taken something that represented darkness and sin and hate and covered it up with something beautiful. And this young man was joyful and Dan was joyful and we were joyful, able to rejoice with him. And if that's not a picture of the gospel, I don't know what is. Because God takes our past and all the hurt and pain that we have caused and experienced and covers it with Jesus and makes it beautiful. And my buddy Dan took his gift that God had given him and then allowed, was able to bless this young man. And not only was this young man blessed, but then Dan was blessed and we were blessed. When we have a generous spirit, we are not only giving a blessing, but we receive a blessing. See, generosity, not only does it create community, not only does it fix our focus, it allows us to take ownership of our faith. To take ownership of our faith, not control, like don't get, don't get me wrong, ownership. To say that we are responsible. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Take a look at this. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. So this is a farming culture, an agricultural society here. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. So what he's saying in this, in this passage is if you put out a little bit of seed, a little bit of stuff's going to grow and you're going to get a little bit back. If you put out a lot of seed, a lot more stuff's going to grow and you're going to get a lot of stuff back. That's what he's saying. So now he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God and praise to God. What this is saying is, look, I am responsible for the depth of my giving, for the depth of my blessing, for the depth of my faith. It's on me. And I'm not talking about prosperity gospel of life. Look, if you just give this right here, God's gonna multiply your gift over and over. I'm not saying that because the blessing often comes in forms of purpose and joy and fulfillment and seeing God radically transform the lives of others. It's about trusting God and increasing our faith. That's why generosity is a spiritual issue. It's not just a financial issue. Generosity is about the posture of our heart. Because oftentimes when it comes to generosity, we take the posture of control. And we hold our gift and our blessing and our resource and our finances close to us and we say, I don't know, God. But see, this posture, it literally looks like we're about to fight with God who gave us the gift. 
And God wants to pour out more gift, more blessing on us. But if we would switch the, our posture to a posture of welcome and reception, we are then giving to the Lord. We are then giving to others. Guess what? Then we're able to receive what God has for us. But we often hold on to those resources, to those finances out of fear and out of security. Thinking, I just got to be ready. I got to be ready for tomorrow because I don't know what tomorrow is going to be. Bring, I, I got to be ready. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be responsible with your finances and with your resources and your gifting. You should be responsible, but you should also be faithful in what God's given you. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but God does. You know, most of you guys know that on, on most Fridays, I send out a video to you to just give you some sort of encouragement, some sort of spiritual teaching uh, to help you get along through the week and, and encourage you. And so I, I want to show you a video that I recorded a while back. Let's take a look. Hey guys, it's Dustin Gallup, campus pastor. We are on top of Mary Jane. Hey, hey guys, it's Dustin Gallup, <laughs> campus pastor. We're on top of Mary Jane at Winter Park. And you can see, we can't see. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes trusting God is a little bit like that. You just got to have faith and know that where I need to go, He's going to make a way. Here we go. Love you guys. I'll see you at church this week. <laughs> so, I know the video or the audio was a little hard to hear, but I was saying that we were on top of Mary Jane. It was snow, it was a blizzard, and we couldn't see, like very far in front of us. And sometimes trusting God and having faith is trusting and believing that God is going to make a way even when we can't see. And at the end of the video, like most of them I do, I say, hey, I love you and I'll see you at church this weekend. But guess what? I didn't. I didn't see you at church that weekend. That video was recorded on March 12th of 2020. The very next day, we closed church for the weekend, went online only, and we didn't come back in person until June 7th of that year. See, we had no idea. Just like that video, I had no idea what was coming up next. None of us had any idea what was coming up next. We had no idea what the next weekend was gonna bring, much less the next three months, six months, year. We're still in this thing. We had no idea. But when we surrender control, when we release control and surrender to faith and let go of the what ifs, then we won't miss out on what God has for us because we had, none of us had any idea the opportunities and the ways that God was gonna bless us and grow our faith in this past year. To take care of one another, to minister to one another, to give above and beyond. You see, because when we give of our time and our self and our gifts and our talents and our money, we worship. Because worship is our response to the greatness and glory of God and all that he's done in, through, and for us. Generosity transforms us into worshipers. That's who we were created to be. So the next step for each and every single one of us today is to take a step to increase your generosity. To increase it. Some of y'all give regularly. Give above and beyond, give sacrificially. Some of y'all, your next step is to give for the very first time. Very first time. And let me tell you why. Because somebody did it for you. If you're watching online, guess what? You're watching online because somebody gave so you could watch online. If you were here worshiping, somebody gave so you could be here. Your marriage is stronger because somebody gave for you. Your kid accepted Christ because somebody gave for you. Your parents got baptized because somebody gave for you. So why in the world would we not want to do that for somebody else? And I know you're sitting there going, well, when you say it like that, it kind of makes sense. Like, yeah, I should give to somebody else. I know. I know. Why wouldn't we want to be a part of what God's doing? For some of us who have given before, you need to take a 90-day tithe challenge. Commit to 90 days, write 90 days on your connection card. Put it, put it in the chat, put it in the comments, 90 days. And, and commit to give faithfully 
for the next 90 days. Giving to God's mission is the only thing that God says, test me in this. Give faithfully and see if I want to open the doors of heaven and pour out blessing and glory and purpose and provision on you. See if I won't do it. I did a funeral of a lady this past week who had committed to a 90-day tithe challenge several years ago, had recorded a video for us and talked about how committing to give faithfully for that 90-day tithe challenge and even sticking out beyond that changed her life. It changed her family. It, it reshaped their, their view of what was enough. It allowed them to be a part of what God is doing. For some of us, you need to commit to serve, to give of your talents and your time and your resources. Look, if you've given for the first time at Fellowship of the Parks, particularly at North Fort Worth, you've gotten a card from me that says, thank you for partnering with us by worshiping through giving. Giving not only strengthens our faith in God, which it does, but it changes the lives of others. See, generosity changes us. It transforms us and it transforms others. It takes us from being consumers of what God's doing to investors, to being an active part of what God's doing. So again, generosity isn't just about giving. It's about a new way of living life. Let me pray for us. God, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving of yourself the best that you had so that we could be a part of your family. God, if somebody's in this room or, or watching online right now and they've never trusted you, they've never received that gift of salvation and of love, I pray that they would receive it today. Look, if that's you and you want to receive that gift, just, just pray with me. Jesus, I know you love me. I know you're God's son. I know you gave everything for me to bring me into your family. I receive that forgiveness. I receive your love and I share it with others. And God, for the rest of us here, God, who have accepted you, I pray that you would help us to take a next step in our generosity, that we would be faithful in what you've called us to. God, that we would manage your blessings well so that others may come to know you, so that others may experience the same joy and peace and purpose that we have. We love you, Jesus. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching today. Before you leave, please take a moment and fill out a connection card at the links provided or in the FOTP app. It's a great way to open up a line of communication with us. Fellowship of the Parks is a generous church. Your giving allows us to serve others and share the good news of Christ, including the FOTP online experience. If you would like to give, simply click the Give link that has been provided. For more information or to find service times and a campus near you, visit fotp.church. Thanks again for watching today and we'll see you next time.